The recorder in Power Automate Desktop is very powerful when you want to learn Power Automate Desktop. It can automatically record your steps and then transfer it into actions. Let me show you. You'll find the recorder by just clicking the recorder up here. And say that we want to find out how my company, Anasjensen.org, is doing based on Google reviews. So what we want to do first is to open up a browser. And we'll do it by clicking these three dots here. Launch new web browser. And then I'll take Chrome. That will open up a Chrome browser. And you can see here that we open up a blank page. So this is the first step. Then I can say record and start recording my actions. But be aware, it will record every step with your mouse and keyboard. For example, if I just do this, you can see that it moves the window to a new position. If I make some actions that don't really make sense, I can either reset it, that will reset the entire flow, or simply click this little delete icon here, that will delete this action. So now I want to navigate to Google. So I'll just say google.com and press enter. Power Automate Desktop automatically says, well, we are launching the new Chrome and then we'll navigate to this in one actions. So it compressed my, say, three or four actions into one. That was quite clever. Now I want to do a search and that is in this search box. You can see it turns red. So when I go down here and then make a search of Anna Jensen org, you'll see that this is the recording. Uh, this is the reviews page. These are the data that we want to scrape over here. We want to get how many stars the company has and how many reviews. We only have two, but it looks good uh, so far. And if you want to review the company, you are very welcome. So um, here you can see we have we actually have two steps. We have a populate text field. That was the Anasjensen org. You can see it here. And then the press form. That was probably the enter click. So now we need to get the data. Let's start with the average rating, which at this time is 5.0. So what I will do is to navigate over here to this span. So it only the red border should only sur surround the reviews. Then I'll right click, extract element value and take the text. You can see the text right now is 5.0, but it will work uh, no matter what the, the average rating is. So now you can see we stored this. We also need to store, uh, to, uh, to store the sample size. Right now it's two, so it's really small. But nevertheless, move over here. Here we cannot get the two out er, isolated, so we need to say two Google reviews. Let me get it again. Right click, extract element value, the text, two Google reviews, and drag that one out. Here you can see we got it in, in a variable called output data. That is a data table I'll show you in a little. Now we have what we need. And if I click done here, you can see we have some auto generated actions that is launching a new Chrome, navigate to Google, do a search for Anders Jensen org, click enter, that was this one, and extract the data. Let us just close down this page. And let's run the automation to see that it works. So we are launching Chrome, we're doing the Google search, and we extract into data. Right now, we will only extract it to a data table, but let me show you how it looks. So if I go over here into output data and I double click this, you can see we actually have the data web scraped here. We have a data table of two columns and one row. If I wanted to get the, the average rating out, then I'll need to refer to this output data and then I'll say I want a 0, 0.0. A data table is zero indexed. That means that the first row you can even see it here is named zero. The first column is also indexed zero. So that'll be 0, 0.0. And uh, two Google reviews, if I want to, to say how big is the sample size, it's two here, then I want to say 0, 0.1. Let's uh, combine these auto generated uh, recorder steps with some manual actions so we can present the data. Again, we'll have a display message. So find a display message and drag it in. Message to display. Well, I want to say based on, and now I'll say how many reviews do we have? We have two right now, but it could change when you watch the video. Click the X here then take the output data. And again, let us just uh, repeat what we wanted to do. We wanted to get uh, how many reviews we have, and that was we only have one row. So that was the zero indexed row. So 
zero point, and then it was the second column, so 0 0.1. We'll do that by saying hard brackets zero, and then another hard bracket start, one hard bracket end. So this one will give us the, um, the value of the data table called output data, and whatever we have in the, the first row, the second column, it's zero indexed again. So then we'll say based on two, three Google reviews, whatever that is, the average stars is, and then we just want to say we want the 0, 0.0 because that's where we have the stars. So shouldn't we just, so we are lazy. We want to automate things and not make errors. So we just copy this one, control V, paste it in, and simply just change this one to a zero. So now we can present the data. And then we just close the browser again. We can uh, make our robot do that, but let's just stick here in this recorder lesson. So this shows you the power of the recorder. You will automat you have automatically created these steps, and now we're combining it with manual steps. It's great for learning purposes. You might not use the recorder in, say, two months from now, but in the beginning, go use it. Learn as much as you can from it, because you will learn these actions very well because they are also generated. And here you can see we have based on two Google reviews, the average stars is 5.0. That's right, I can click OK. The robot finished. Let's also say that we want to use a variable in this auto-generated flow. So instead of Anas Jensen org, I might want to change this based on some input in another system. So here I'll find a set variable here and I'll drag this one in. So here, the variable, I will give it a name so I can refer to it. I'll call it page. And let's say I just want to search for Noma. It's a restaurant here in Copenhagen. I'll give it the value here. I can click Save. Now I want to use this variable inside where I do the Google search. So if I double click here, I delete this Anas Jensen org. Click this X here and find the page. So now I do a search based on whatever this value holds. Imagine that we can change this based on previous actions. Right now it's hard coded in as a say as a hard coded in as a set variable. We could also have a list. So we want to get the reviews of say like 10 pages. Then we can store it in a list and iterate through it with it for each. Now it's just a one. So but if I click here, you'll now see that I search for Noma. And then in a little while, I will say based on 1,646 Google reviews, the average stars is 4.6. So that's it. To watch the next lesson, go click the video up here, which I have prepared for you.